Well, hi, and thanks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Air Gun channel. Today is part two in our multi-part video series where we're going to be customizing a uh, brand new HW Model 95 air rifle. Uh, now, this customization process involves installing a custom uh, left-handed stock that a, a good friend donated to the channel. Mark, you know who you are, and I can't thank you enough for this wonderful gift. Um, we're also going to be installing a tune kit. And uh, we're going to go ahead and finish this custom stock, but the first step is to get it inlitted. So that's what we're doing today. I've, I've already done off-camera about 95% of the inlitting, so there's just a little bit left to do, and I thought I'd bring you folks along just to show you what the process is. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to inlet the action into the uh, stock and to the point that we can get the stock screws to engage and to tighten down the way they should. We're going to inlet the trigger guard uh, with the same uh, idea that we'll get those screws to line up with the action and... and put everything together and hopefully we'll end up with this which is the finished product of the work that we we're doing today this is a fully inleted uh, rifle action into a custom left-handed stock everything's nice and snug there's no vibration there's no looseness everything is just perfect so why don't you follow me to the workbench and I'll show you how that's done and I want to thank you again for stopping by the pellets and pistons air gun channel Okay, so we're going to begin to uh, inlet the action into the stock. I've, I've actually begun this procedure already. I'm bringing you in now about um, three quarters of the way through the process. We're, we're just about to the point where we need to be. Um, and by, by that, what I mean is that the action is able to drop down into the stock far enough for the four inch screws to engage. Uh, we still need to inlet the trigger guard to see how the, uh, the rear of the action screws in, but uh, I, I don't imagine we'll have any uh, issues there. So at any rate, uh, without wasting any more time, we're going to show you how this is done. Now, a lot of people buy uh, a material called um, inletting black, which is basically just a paste that you put on the action uh, and you drop it into the wood stock and that'll leave a residue on the wood, letting you know where to, um, where to remove material. Uh, but the old-fashioned guys, back when they were building flintlocks and so forth, they didn't have inlitting black. What they used was the soot from a kerosene lantern. Uh, and that's such a good method that I still use it to this day. I've, I've used it several times over the years when building um, custom stocks for, for different things. This is one of my projects right here. This is for a, a black powder 45 caliber rifle that I, I plan on finishing up one of these years, maybe when I finally retire. Uh, but at any rate, if you see what I've got here is a relatively high flame making quite a bit of soot. And what we're going to do is take the action and we're going to coat it in that soot just by quickly running it over the flame. You don't want to leave it in one spot too long. You don't want a lot of heat. But what we want is to coat the action in soot. Uh, and that, by doing that, what we're going to do is give ourselves uh, a coating on the steel, which will show up on the wood when we drop the action into the, to the stock. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with a close-up in just a second. So at any rate, we'll turn that flame down so we don't have to breathe that. And then we'll drop this into the stock carefully. Press it in. Basically, what I've done is I've got soot all over the action, and now I'm dropping it into the wood, and I'm allowing the soot to make contact with the wood, and when I remove the action, it should leave some residue that will show us where the high spots are and where we have to begin to remove material. Uh, so let's take this out of the stock, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as you can see, if I can get it to uh, focus for you, there we go. You can see right here, well, we have to remove this material a little bit here. And as we go down the stock, you can still see some more here. Uh, just a touch here, very little. We want a little contact. It's not going to hurt anything, but uh, uh, the major contact points are keeping that action from dropping in. So all the way back, it looks pretty good. we got a little up in the corner here that we have to remove. And if we look at the other side... got the same thing we got some material here that's got to come out uh, maybe a little bit back in that corner and it looks like the uh, retaining bolt here is leaving a little mark so it's actually hitting before it can bottom it's not but I mean uh, it is bottoming out in this cutout so we have to relieve that a little more this side looks okay uh, or does it 
No, oh, there's a little mark there too. So we have to uh, relieve a little bit here. And that's basically what's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and, and I'll take up my uh, wood rasp in this case. Some folks use scrapers, but uh, that's a much more time consuming process, but it does leave a better finish. Um, but I'm going to be using a rasp and I'm going to take these high spots down and uh, we'll try it again in just a few minutes and uh, we'll see what kind of difference we make. So stick around. This ought to be interesting. Okay, so I'm going to begin to remove some material with a... Uh, fine wood rasp. I'm using the concave surface. This is a half round rasp so I can follow the contour of the wood a little better with it. I'm going to go ahead and just remove those high spots that we found when we dropped the action in. I don't have to press too hard. At this point in the game we're so close that we don't want to remove too much material. There we go. Now we'll start on this side. And if we didn't remove enough, we'll come back and we'll do some more. Uh, it's better to take off less than what you need. As you know, because you can always take off more, but you can't put it back. Looking good. And again, a couple of the contact points I'm not really worried about. Um, because a little bit of wood to metal contact, in fact, full wood to metal contact is, is kind of desirable. You want some support. All right, and uh, from here, we're going to do it again. So I just turn up the lantern, get this in here, just like so. Now, don't worry about all the soot on the action because this action is going to get a full tune. It's going to be completely stripped down and cleaned. Um, the scope, <laughs> I'm not too worried about it. It's a cheap scope, but same thing holds true for that. We're going to wipe it down really good when we're through with this job. So uh, I'm not concerned about the mess that we're making here. All right, we're going to drop it in again. Maybe. There we go. Press it down good and snug looking good now folks all right we'll take it back out yeah all right let's have a look and see how we did okay so you'll notice that uh, we don't have any contact where the uh, cross bolt goes now have a little bit of contact on the side but again a little bit of side contact is good but look here at the bottom there's a little bit to be removed here um, coming down again again more side contact but it's uh, it's getting so close that uh, we have to be careful at this point all right that side looks pretty good not too much to remove I think I see another spot right there it's got to get cleaned up and then uh, on this side, not too bad here, not too bad, is that a spot, nope, yeah maybe, maybe that is, oh, here's some more here back where we had this contact earlier but it's looking better now, it's looking like it's really starting to come down. there to let the forward end of the action drop in but uh, yeah we're getting pretty close I think we're gonna try the screws in a couple of minutes and see how we do with that as well okay so now we're ready to begin with the trigger guard we're gonna repeat the same process that we used on the action we're gonna go ahead and coat this with the uh, with the soot we'll drop it in we'll see how uh, much contact area we have and then we'll go from there so first step is to put the lantern on Let's get this thing ready to rock and roll. Hmm. 
you just want to coat the edges here turn the flame down all right now the adjusting screw hole goes to the rear it's always good to remember that push it down in there now I've done most of the fitting already um, just to save some time on camera so we'll show you where we're making contact so there's a little bit of contact right here some more back in this corner here and come around the other side this side we got a little bit right there and a little bit up at the top but it slipped right past the top so I'm not going to worry about that too much um, it's just about bottomed out. You can see where it's hitting right here in the bottom. I know I don't need to adjust that at all um, Yeah, it's hitting on both sides, so that's good. It's hitting back here. I can see the uh, See where the uh, soot is making contact there, too. So it's pretty much bottomed out We'll just clean up these sides just a tiny bit and we'll call it done Okay, so I'm just gonna take this very small very sharp chisel and I'm just gonna chisel away very gently just a small shaving of material wherever those high spots are. Again, where the high spots are right up near the top, I'm not going to worry too much about those because the trigger guard was able to slip right past so that just means a nice snug fit but we're there um, down towards the bottom I do want to try to make sure that we're bottoming out all the way around so I'm gonna just take off the slightest bit of material clean that up a little all right very good it looks like we're uh, we're about ready to try putting the action into the stock all right so let's do that okay so we have the action back in the stock and now it's time to try to put the screws in make sure everything's lining up the way it should um, so we'll begin with the four end screws put this side in first wipe the action down a little bit so it'll be easier to handle it a little getting my fingers all dirty <laughs> all right this one's started I'm gonna leave it loose and see how the other one fits I use my handy little flashlight and just check that hole yeah it looks perfect Now, I'm going to insert the other screw, if I can get it to start here, there we go, alright, that one started, I'm not going to tighten them too hard right now, because I still want to fit the uh, trigger guard screws in the rear. There we go. Perfect. And we'll take it out of the vise. see what we got about this trigger guard again adjusting hole to the rear looking good look at 
that one started. Looks like everything's lining up the way it should. Good. All right, so everything's bolted in, everything's good and snug. So now we have the stock fit for the rifle. And now it's time to begin working on finishing the stock, get it all sanded down. I think we're gonna change the profile up here. I don't want this fork to be, if you notice how long this fork in the stock is, um, that's gonna vibrate some, I would think, and cause a little bit of harmonic. So I'm gonna keep, keep it a little shorter than that and maybe eliminate some of that vibration. Uh, it also creates a weak point, in my opinion, for the stock. It looks pretty being out that long, but I think we're going to finish it off right around even with the uh, breech block here. I'm not sure if we're going to round it, or if we're going to schnoddle it, or if I'm going to uh, just make a, a reverse 45 on it. I may do something very similar to what's on there right now. Anyway, that's, uh, that's for the next couple of steps, and those are future videos. I want to thank you folks for stopping by the Pellets and Pistons Airgun channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. Hit the bell if you'd like to be reminded of future videos. And by all means, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Thanks again, folks. Have a great day.